Hi there, I'm Keith Cauley, and this is Thrive, a Bridgestone America's podcast where we explore our company through compelling conversations with teammates across our organization. We've introduced you to the concept of Enlighten in previous episodes of the podcast, outlining at a high level our approach both in advanced tire technology for the electric vehicle world of future mobility and in our end-to-end operations across Bridgestone. Since those conversations, our first Enlightened products have come to market, two of them to be exact, marking a shift for Bridgestone in many different ways. Today, we talk to Jess Plack and Dale Harrigal, two engineers from our Akron, Ohio Technology Center, who helped bring these products to life in different ways from the material science, design, and development areas. They help explain how these products are changing the game through breakthroughs like our new Peak Life Polymer and moving Bridgestone forward on our enlightened journey. We hope you enjoy this conversation. Hi, everybody. We are joined here by two of our engineers up at our America's Technology Center in Akron, Ohio, and we are going to talk about Enlighten. We're going to talk about technology, engineering, some chemistry probably going to come through, I think, in this as we talk about materials, uh, but a lot of exciting things as we bring this Enlighten roadmap to life. Uh, I'm joined today by Jess Plack. She is manager of Advanced Sustainable Materials and Simulation up there in Akron, Ohio. Jess, thanks for taking in the time. Thanks for having me. Yeah, and she is also here with Dale Harrigal, and Dale is the chief engineer of new product engineering for replacement, but very specifically in replacement tire, the premium and luxury segments. That's always what I've known about you, Dale. Good to see you, man. Good to see you. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Let's uh, let's learn a little bit about each of you, your backgrounds, your history. Uh, I, I would especially like to know how Dale becomes a, a man of premium and luxury of in, as far as a title goes. Um, but let's start with Jess and we'll, we'll build up to that. Uh, Jess, what's your career journey been? What's your background uh, into this current role? And then what do you work on currently at Bridgestone? Yeah, so I started my Bridgestone journey at the ATC here. I I went through the Navigator program, had a couple of rotations, and then I landed in the Consumer Tread Compound Development Group, as it was referred to back then. So we went through a couple of reorgs, and that group split, and I landed in the Advanced Consumer Compounding Group. So that group was responsible for delivering next-generation compound technology in our consumer space. After I spent a a couple of years in those those compound uh, development worlds, um, I transferred over into the advanced reinforcement group. So they work on next generation technology as well, but they're focused on all of the materials in the tire that are not rubber compounds. So your textiles, steel cords, bead wire, materials of that nature. So I learned a lot of different materials and appreciation for a different side of the tire definitely through through that experience. And then my current position was open and it was a really exciting opportunity and work I really wanted to get involved in. So like you mentioned, I'm the manager of our advanced and sustainable materials materials and simulation group. And the group does work in three main areas. So advanced materials, meaning what kind of next generation materials can we look at to continue to push the performance of our compounds? Sustainable materials, I think we're all pretty familiar with our sustainability journey, but the group is really working hard to vet and understand new sustainable material technologies before we take them down the development cycle. And then the last piece is the simulation piece, really just culminating our efforts to incorporate machine learning and AI tools and models to be able to drive some of the decisions we're making in our development process. So very exciting work that the the group is doing. I'm very excited to be part of the team, but I'm excited to be here today just to give everyone an insight to the material side of some of our recent successful launches we've had. Yeah, well, I think people understand when we talk about material science at Bridgestone, like rubber. We know rubber, right? But the idea of what goes into tires is so much beyond rubber from a materials perspective. Um, and so, yeah, we're excited to dive into a little bit of that and where we're we're innovating. This is the the bleeding edge of of material science that is is part of this journey as well. Um, well, Dale, aforementioned uh, chief engineer, new product engineering for replacement. Uh, you've been at, you've been a couple different places at Bridgestone. I know over the journey, but what's been your path and where are you now? Well, I'm actually uh, working my 31st year with Bridgestone, so I've been here quite a while. Uh, Three decades. uh, Yeah. I spent more than 20 years in the Firestone Racing Program, Mm -hmm. and after the 100th running of the Indianapolis 500 in 2016, for a number of reasons, I decided it was time for a different challenge and feel very lucky that the company was willing to kind of take a chance on me and uh, bring me over to the consumer side. 
of development, which I have really enjoyed, and uh, worked my way up to chief engineer of uh, consumer replacement for performance and luxury. And the performance side really dovetails very nicely with what I used to do with the racing organization. So very happy to be here, very excited to talk about our new products. Yeah, you were on some of the coolest stuff when it was the the IndyCar and the Firestone Racing, and now some of the coolest stuff that we're doing from a product side as well as we look at some of these enlightened products that have come to market this year that it, we'll, we'll kind of explore uh, across this conversation. Um, but enlighten is kind of the word, right, for, for this discussion today. Um, we've talked about it a little bit on the podcast before. We had our chief operating officer, Scott Damon, who helped explain the large big picture, right, of end-to-end operations. There's something everywhere that can contribute to the process uh, that we're, we're operating under at Bridgestone to try to make things the best performing and as sustainable as possible without sacrificing one or the other, right, which has traditionally been part of a trade-off in a lot of the, the past in, in designing products and, and working through. Um, when you were both first introduced to this concept, right, I mean, it starts to make its way from a lot of these strategy meetings into the teams that are going to have to implement it. Um, um, Jess, let's start with you. I, I, what is what is your head? Where does your head go? What is your reaction when you hear about what they're trying to do? Yeah, so I, I think from the materials side, we always had a, a work stream to get technologies into the market, right? But what this enlightened strategy really did from both the tech stack perspective, but also the business strategy perspective, is it really provided a framework for us to combine some existing work streams and then also add some new ones. So you mentioned the focus on sustainability. That wasn't always a main focus of the story before in our development process. So we've really been able to incorporate all of those efforts into one now that we have this framework. And we're starting to see the benefits of that, right? Uh, There's increased collaboration when we're communicating across the business to different groups because we're talking in this similar language and we can understand where we're trying to go and where we're going together because we have that shared goal and that shared language. And I think too, from the development side, we're going to talk about two of our first successes in this enlightened strategy. But, you know, when we look internally into the development process, we had to make some changes to include everything that the strategy encompasses, right? So we've had to make some changes. We've hit some road bumps along the way, but we're really starting to gain traction from that initial stage of development and taking products all the way through to market and beyond. So very exciting journey that we've been on and we continue to go on. Yeah, kind of a, a, a kind of a mimic of Bridgestone as large, right? There's a foundation of some of this in the past, but there's still a transition, a transformation of sorts that has to take place uh, because that is a, a new direction in terms of a lot of the specifics. Dale, what about you from the kind of the product and the entire design side and, and how do you think through Enlighten when you kind of first get a full layer? the land. Yeah, I think for the product and the design side, really for us, it was taking those materials that teams like Jess's team is working on, and how do we look at the trade-offs? You know, tire design is always a series of engineering trade-offs, and anytime we have a new material, we have to make sure that we're we're delivering on our brand promise, we're delivering to the boss what we say we're going to with a given tire. So we really need to look at where do those new materials allow us to expand our design envelope. And we can talk about that a little bit as we get into these new materials and just making sure that we really understand the implementation of those materials, what it's going to mean from our factory, from our manufacturing perspective, and how do we incorporate the the tremendous benefits that we're getting from some of these materials. Maybe we change the tire design slightly to, to make sure we use that benefit in wear, but maybe we can also make some wet or some winter adjustments as well. So it's really the balance of performance that my team is looking at. How do we take um, something that Jess's team gives us and convert that into tire performance? Yeah, and we've got two products that were able to kind of come to market this year in 2023 that kind of tell tell that story as you just laid it out, right? Um, there's a new new material, uh, a new polymer that we'll talk about in just a minute um, that is part of that process. But over the course of you know the last two years or so, as as Enlighten and Bridgestone 3.0 take place, it's culminated with this initial 2023 product offering. So Dale, what did come out this year, and uh, what and why are, are they significant? I guess. 
Well, we had we had two really exciting products come out this year. The first one was the Taranza EV, which we launched back in May, and we had the opportunity to launch it at Electrify Expo in Long Beach, California. And it was a really great way for Bridgestone to talk to leaders in the EV space and really get our name and our new tire out there. And that new tire is significant for a couple of reasons. It's our first offering dedicated to the EV consumer, and with that focus, it was a really unique development process for us because we typically do development across a huge range of vehicles. In this case, we were very much focused on the Tesla fitments, the Mach-E, you know, it was was, uh, really focused development for us. And the tire is exceptional in that it's got great wear life. It's got the peak life polymer in it. And I'm so glad Jess is here today (laughs) because I don't have to fumble through trying to explain what peak life is. We've got the experts. Um, I've got all the long words I will fail to pronounce correctly here. So we'll let Jess handle that for both of us. Yeah. So I think um, peak life in the Taranza EV is really going to work to our sustainability message and give the EV customer the wear, the wear life that they've grown to expect from a conventional vehicle. And then our second uh, major launch this year using the Enlightened Technology is the Potenza Sport All Season. The Potenza Sport All Season replaces the RE980 AS Plus, which is a highly ranked tire right now on Tire Rack. But we're very excited about Potenza Sport All Season because, again, we have peak life, we have some more wear life, we're going to deliver better wet than we had with the RE980 AS Plus while maintaining the same amount of snow. And the other unique thing about the Potenza Sport All Season is it's Bridgestone's first, or Bato's first, North America's first, um, Y-Speed rated tires. So our colleagues in the Monterey, Mexico facility have worked very hard to bring Y-Speed rating to life for Bato. And that really is exciting because it opens us up to more customers. And f- so for those listening, BATO, as Dale just said, uh, we, we like try to lay out our acronyms here where we can help, uh, where I remember to, to explain, but Bridgestone America's Tire Operations, B-A-T-O, uh, is that acronym for listeners at home. Um, and as Dale said, so peak life, a huge part of both of those uh, coming to life. So Jess, what, what, this is where we get out of the way and let you educate us greatly. Uh, what is peak life as a polymer and why has it been so significant? Yeah, so our Polymer team would uh, really be able to give you the in-depth details, <laughs> but for our listeners and our, our viewers, just to, to give a high-level overview of the Peak Life Polymer, it's a unique technology. It's our next-generation type polymer, and what makes it unique is it's able to react with the silica that's in our tread compounds in these two products products that we're talking about today. And it does that reaction at an increased level versus our previous generation compounds. And so what does this really mean when how we relate to tire performance? And what does this mean for our customers themselves, right? When we look at the tire performance, we're able to get that increased wear life that Dale was mentioning, but we're also able to recognize an increase in rolling resistance performance as well. And Dale had referenced, you know, in development, we're always playing this game of of trade-offs. We improve performance in one area, but we sacrifice in another. And Peak Life really is unique because it's uh, it has the ability, we, we can recognize both of those improvements in performance and wear and rolling resistance, but we don't see a trade-off in any other area. And in addition to those performances, we're also able to increase the sustainability of the tire because we're able to increase the wear life and the overall tire life with the inclusion of the polymer. So delivering straight to our enlightened strategy, right? Delivering on performance without sacrificing against sustainability. And this definitely is a a key material that we added to our lineup. Yeah. through this process. And I think that the the importance of wear life, right? I think it makes sense to those of us now familiar with e- electric vehicles, but maybe for some people, especially when we launched Taranza EV, a natural question for some would be, well, why does an electric vehicle need its own specifically designed tire? Uh, Dale, can you tell us a little bit about why the, the wear, I mean, rolling resistance, we need to help it go farther, save battery life, but wear resistance in particular, why is that so drastically different maybe for an electric vehicle? The primary reason, um, well, there's a couple of reasons why EV have need for higher wear life. One is typically the battery is is very heavy. So the vehicle itself tends to be on the heavier side of vehicles. Uh, To overcome the vehicle weight, the manufacturers typically specify higher inflation pressures. And when, when we do that, we have 
high weight and high inflation pressure, our footprint gets kind of small. So now we have a vehicle that has instant torque. EVs have 100% of torque at zero RPM. Uh, we're all familiar with you know how quick a Tesla is, how quick some of the EVs can be. So we have a lot of wear life potential there. We have a lot of load on the tire, a lot of torque on the tire driving the vehicle forward. So there is a need for increased wear life on those vehicles to get back to the consumer expectation of, you know, a 50,000 mile tire. It's amazing, like, to experience it for the first time when you're not really anticipating it, right? The, the get up and go on some of those EVs. We were we were at a, a testing uh, event with uh, one of our one of our track drivers, test drivers, and he is telling a story and he's talking very casually as we set up to go. And his voice and everything doesn't even change as he hits the gas. And you're used to having a little bit of a ramp up as you hit maybe into a straightaway, but no, your <laughs> your head is in the back. <laughs> your head is on the back of the seat within <laughs> within moments. It's a it's an amazing thing. But yeah, that makes it a little bit more tangible, right, on the, the design difference uh, when we talk about the vehicles. Um, I, I mean, I'm a, I'm a person, I'm listening and, and learning about uh, the processes, right? Like, I'm, I'm not an engineer. I'm an excitable guy who loves to do the storytelling side. And so where my head goes is, like, we'll start with Jess, like you and, and your team on the material side. Peak Life Polymer is starting to come to life. You know what you need to do, what you've kind of been tasked to try to go solve. And then you see maybe the results of some of the testing and the process start to come to life. Like how, how do you process that and manage expectations and keep things moving? Because I feel like when you're creating new breakthroughs, there is such an excitement there that I don't know. Like I would just be shaking all the time. I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, it definitely is very easy to get excited about breakthrough technologies. And we want that, right? We want everyone to be excited about the the stuff we're working on and getting these these products all the way to, to market. So it, it is exciting. Um, but as, as always, you know, when you introduce a new technology, it, it can come with challenges and especially when you're running up against the clock. So I think, you know, even when we have those initial results that look promising, we, we kind of have to take a step back down to reality as project owners and really recognize the amount of work that needs to happen for us to get a technology like Peak Life, for example, all the way into a tire that's in production. And there's a lot of work that needs to happen between that. So it really boils down to managing expectations by just following the processes that we have in place. They're in place for a reason, and we need to work together to be able to accelerate technologies like that to get them into our products to our customers as quickly as we can. Yeah. I, 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 it makes sense why then engineers are so even keel all the time, right? I'm the I'm the opposite end of the spectrum. When can we talk about it? Not yet. Not yet. When can we talk about it? Not yet. It's not ready yet. We'll get there. I, Dale, that, for you, it's the the motorsports Firestone racing tire design. I mean, it's an, you're going to races annually and making tweaks in between. That's a pretty rapid design and development cycle on iteration. Now that you're in the replacement world, I mean, we've talked to Will Robbins and some others. Some of these things are long, multi-year runs. I, I guess, how do you gauge that over time, you know, manage your expectations and excitement, but you're going to start to see at some points is the delivery of the things that you were hoping to see, right? Yeah, it, it's very exciting to be working on products that the average consumer can use that you, you walk through, a, a, you know, a, a shopping center parking lot and you see a product that you helped design that's that's one of the key differences between what i'm doing now and, and racing and you know the director who has the office next to me always teases me and says it's a long race consumer <laughs> is a long race <laughs> the, and, the marathon and, here yes and, he, and he's absolutely right you know i was i was got very used to that the nice side about motorsports is you make a change and you know a month or two later you've got feedback You've got feedback from the drivers in, in the consumer world. You know, we're making changes that we won't have complete feedback on for years. So so that's very different. But it, it's it's always moving forward is always exciting. It's it's good. It's good for us. And then the, the other aspect of peak life that was really exciting for us is, you know, we are typically struggling to get one and two percent gains out of things. You know, single digit percentage gains is pretty common. And Peak Life really kind of broke the mold on that. You know, we were looking at double digit percentage improvements in wear life and things of that nature. And, and that's part of what made it so exciting was when we saw some of the initial returns on our wear testing, 
um, it was, there was almost a sense of, you know, is this a real result? How, how we test it again. Let's make sure this is a real result. <laughs> exactly. That's where I'd have a hard time being like, what? This seems very exciting. Um, but And you've both touched on it a little bit, but there, there are two different areas of the engineering process. Where do those two pieces ultimately come together, or is it fluid throughout? Because there is some separate action that needs to be taking place, but where then do they merge, or how uh, often do they merge? Well, I... I'll say um, there is a team that kind of sits between us, which is advanced performance engineering, and they actually take technologies from around the company and they build what are called tech stacks. So they basically, they might take technologies from different groups and build them into developmental tires and basically see, do these technologies work together? Do they provide the... Uh, you know, the expected benefit that we're looking for. And then once they have a pretty good idea of how the tech stacks interact and, and how these development tires perform, only at that point does it really come to my team to, to take these technologies and expand them across an entire range of sizes for, for instance, like the Taranza EV or the Potenza Sport all season. Yeah. Jess, what about your side? I mean, if, if there's the team that connects, it seems pretty straightforward, but how does that collaboration work from the material side? Yeah, definitely key collaboration to get to get a, a, an early technology, whether it's material or, or some other technology like new pattern technology, that there are a lot of examples, but um, collaboration, communication key to get that early stage all the way through to production when it gets to, to Dale's group. So if we take a step back at the development process, I'll use materials as an example because I'm familiar with it, but all of our technologies that are feeding the tech stack go through this same process. So the early development starts before the tire line even has a name, right? Where we're really working years before and we're years ahead from the development cycle from Dale's point of view, right? And so we do a lot of collaboration with the APE group that, that Dale was mentioning. They're kind of the gatekeeper of those initial tire trials, of the targets, and that's where the key collaboration inside of ATC happens. But we've also in, introduced a process, a technology deployment process, which I'll refer to as TDP process, that really allows us to communicate across the business where we're going. So each technology will go through that TDP process and essentially it's a stage gate process that takes us from those very early stages, proof of concept, all the way through to production and beyond. And so at those reviews of those meetings, we have representatives from manufacturing, from procurement, IP, quality, and we're really able to communicate across the business where we're headed, why we're headed in that direction, and how we're going to get there. And everybody's input is is able to be shared. So I think that collaboration early in the early stages is, is key to getting to success down the line. So, um, yeah, I think throughout that process, we're, we're able to, to have a change in direction when we get closer to the actual production and, and closer to market, we may be looking through a lens a little bit clearer and may have to pivot because targets shift slightly. Um, but ultimately following that process is, is really key to getting technologies delivered. And, and once we hit a certain point in that gate process, we're able to expand to other groups like Dale's and, and some of the other tire groups that are able to use technologies. Yeah. Well, we talk about the end to end operations of all of those things with Enlighten, but when you talk about design and development, we're talking about materials here and then designing the tire to be able to perform, but you add in, like you said, manufacturing on the front end, there's the procurement and the sourcing of material. I mean, whatever you design and however this process goes, you need everybody to be able to do their part of it in whatever it is you design. So it is just such a huge puzzle. Um, you talk about those kind of those check gates, those stop gates along the way, Jess. I know um, Peak Life, the project itself, won a Bridgestone America's Award this past year for the, the breakthrough in this technology. Dale was talking about the gains that it delivered. Um, and what I was reading about that that just really caught my eye is how we started fast-tracking that then because of how significant it was to get it into as many of these upcoming products as possible to affect that improvement in design and development, uh, that seems to be, <laughs> I mean, that that seems like it would be a lot of maybe pressure, but how did that change maybe the stopgate process when you're like, okay, we've proven it, we've tested, this is great. I said, okay, now scale immediately, right? Is that very different than usual? Um. 
Yeah, it depends on the program. I think peak life is definitely a, a, a unique situation. Um, we, we still have to follow the process, but, you know, we look for opportunities to be able to accelerate in certain places. So what makes the peak life a little bit unique and, and how we were able to move so quickly, right? We had those initial results. Very exciting for us as a materials side, right? We were able to, to showcase the benefits, but the next steps in scaling up a polymer are, are difficult, right? These are large business decisions that we need to be making if we're talking about about scaling up from, you know, pretty small volumes into these production volumes that we're talking about. And so it was a really, really critical piece of, of the process to have that business alignment and agreement to fast track this polymer development and scale up into implementation. So definitely a key piece that, that allowed us to, to move forward. And, you know, I think throughout the entire process, because after the peak life gets scaled up, then we have to move almost just as quickly with the compound development and then into the tire development to meet the launch timings. And I think what stands out to me most is in all of these conversations, there was never a voice in the room saying, we're not going to meet this timing, forget about it. It's just not going to happen. There were always voices saying, we're going to make this happen. These are the teammates that need to be involved. And this is a timeline we can do this in. And I think that really just speaks volumes to not only the teammates and the leadership that were involved in these launches, but also our company as a whole and the commitment that, that we're making to deliver on these enlightened products. We just had the, the quality team in here as a, a podcast as well, and they will remind us that we did all of these things according to the process at the, the quality standards of our mission statement, of course. So no doubt that we, we followed that. Um, to, to what she was just saying, Dale, you know, kind of moving that and having it be a unique design, Taranza EV, the timeline, my understanding of that kind of bringing to market from initial, you know, conception was also faster than normal tire development processes. What can you share about kind of how that that came together in the collaboration involved. Yes, it was. Taranza EV, I think we're saying it was an 18-month development <laughs> from my team, which is very quick. And That's I, more of I a sprint to... than a marathon for yeah. your director next door right there, yeah. That's almost race tire <laughs> environment. <laughs> and, and I have to echo Jess's comments. You know, we have a tremendous team at Bridgestone, and we would not have been able to achieve that launch date without – the alignment of everyone on the team, including, you know, our Wilson, North Carolina plant, our Monterey, Mexico plant, teammates in those plants worked very hard to bring this tire to fruition. Um, PED, which is our process engineering development group, has been working very hard on getting these new technologies into the plants. And, you know, not only that, but pushing them to full scale industrial production. Uh, so realistically, from our side, you know, we we had the champion tire from the from the advanced performance engineering group. We had the small. We talked about how a relatively small number of fitments for Teslas and Mach E's, and it was really a question of expanding their their development tire across the size lineup, bringing in the molds and and getting the technologies into the plant, getting the tire released and qualified. Now, we launched that at Electrify Expo, is what you noted, and that is some big needle movers, influencers in that specific EV space. And then the other product we talked about was Potenza Sport All Season. We kind of debuted and launched that one at Atlanta Motorsports Park with some people who love driving fast cars. This is the the performance and luxury part of Dale's job right here for sure. Um, but really putting it to the test in some supercars and some sports, uh, you know, high speed performance cars. Um, in each of those audiences, I guess, what was the feedback then from the people? You talk about it's when you bring a product to life, you're going to get that instant feedback from what consumers think. When you brought these to those kind of target audiences, what was the initial reaction from them? I think the initial reaction has been overwhelmingly positive. Uh, Potenza Sport all season at the uh, Potenza Week mm -hmm. event in Atlanta Motorsports Park, uh, very highly regarded, lots of excellent reviews, press, influencers online. I've done a couple of different interviews talking about Potenza Sport all season mm -hmm. with, with various media outlets. Just prepping you for this conversation today. <laughs> yes, Just prepping all me part for of the this gauntlet. conversation, absolutely. But um, yeah, the, the, the reaction has been overwhelmingly positive. And also with the Taranza EV, we've seen a, a great reaction to that. The sustainability message and Enlighten has really resonated with that customer. And we also 
not the least of which we've also seen some great consumer feedback online about the Taranza EV. You know, the, the tire is released. Uh, people have been experiencing the tire for themselves and they've been posting some really nice things about it. So that's great to see as well. Yeah, it gives us a, a springboard, I guess, for the future. And as we kind of wrap up our time together, that's, I guess, where, where we always like to leave it a little bit is a look ahead, right? I guess, you know, Jess, you talk about this being, we, we've talked at all of this, about made a multi-year journey, but, you know, from the materials side, we're working years ahead in development of some of these things. I guess, you know, you, you have a breakthrough like peak life and it's such a significant thing. I mean, it's, how do you top that? But like, where do we go looking forward from materials and then, Dale, like from a product pers uh, perspective, what do we have on, on the road on uh, the years ahead? Yeah, so I, I think this is a good moment to, to pause for a second and, and celebrate these two launches, right? And all the teammates were involved, <laughs> but very exciting that that we have a lot more to come uh, down the pipeline. So I'll let Dale speak to the products. But from the materials side, you know, we are fully committed to delivering on the Enlightened strategy. We have a lot of active project work in next generation raw materials, compounds, reinforcement technologies that you'll you'll be seeing in the years yeah. to come. So not ready it's yet. really ex we'll follow the <laughs> not process. ready yet. <laughs> um, but it, it's really exciting to know that that the decisions and uh, observations that we're making today are really going to influence where we are on our journey 5, 10, 15 years from now. So I'm excited for the journey ahead. Yeah, go ahead, Dale. And from the standpoint of new products, you know, Bridgestone has a sustainability message. We have Enlighten. We're going to roll Enlighten into a new product category next year that I can't really talk about <laughs> quite yet. But the one thing I can talk about is we have 13 more sizes of Taranza EV that will launch early next year. And that will open up the Taranza EV to just about every Tesla fitment and a couple other key EV fitments as well. So we'll be expanding that line. And then a bit later in 2024, we'll have an additional 28 sizes of Potential Sport All Season, which will bring that to 76 sizes total. And that will do a great job of covering that UHP performance space with the Potential Sport All Season and opening that tire up to a wide range of consumers. So very excited about the future, very excited about about what we can bring, and um, it's uh, it's a great time to be at Bridgestone. That's right, I, and I hope that this for people just brings you know, the reality of this closer. You know, we hear some of these large-scale strategic initiatives um, and, and trying to deliver on the E8 commitment we talk about all the time, but these are things that are providing different values all the way around the circle of the Bridgestone E8 commitment, and at the same time, hopefully making what we're trying to do with Enlighten tangible for people, right, in terms of this is a real product now brought to market, showing the things we say Enlighten is going to do. Um, so it is. It's really exciting to see. Uh, Dale, I did not prep you for, for this at all, but we just had the Firestone Archives uh, group in here as well to do a, a podcast. You spent a lot of time in that Firestone racing scene, have some stories about Mario Andretti. What's a, what's a good Mario story you could share to close this out that Mario would be okay with you sharing? The, the best Mario story I've ever heard is he came into the ATC one time and for a tour and we have a selection of display tires outside of the race tire development offices downstairs and he told us the story how in the 50s and 60s if you look at a race tire from that era they have tiny little cuts all across the tread called sipes and at the time the sipes were thought necessary to allow any dust or dirt or anything on the racetrack a place to go as the car was going around the track well, Mario was doing a tire test for Firestone, and like most race tire tire tests, they were running out of time in the afternoon. And I also have to mention that those sipes were put in by hand. The tire was cured with no sipes Very in it, and manual. then the sipes were, were cut in in a manual process. So the F Firestone had a set of tires that they wanted to give to Mario that they hadn't cut the sipes in yet. And Mario said, you know, it's late in the day, it's getting dark. I'll go out, I'll just try it, I'll give you a sense of how it feels. And he went out on the tires without the sipes, and of course they were much quicker. <laughs> no one knew that at the time, but he was much faster on the Hindsight tires. Hindsight didn't now, have yes. the cuts in the, in the tread. So he begged Firestone to let him run those tires in next year's Indy 500 <laughs> without the cuts. 
<laughs> but Firestone, of course, said no, we can't do that. <laughs> but he was instrumental in a lot in basically causing the transition from the tires with the cuts to the slick tires. And it was all based on basically an accidental discovery at the end of a Firestone tire test uh, early in the 1960s. So I love it. I always thought that was a fascinating well, story. It, it just Mario. goes to reinforce that even when Mario Andretti says, give me this, the engineers are saying, I'm sorry, we're following the process. It's not ready yet. We can't just let you exactly. run these in the Indy 500. Quality control even through the decades. I love it here at Bridgestone. Well, both of you, I really appreciate you taking the time to, to share your insight and, and obviously your, your great knowledge. Uh, in this area that is very exciting as Dale kind of closed us out with the, this setting us up for the future here. Um, but Jess, uh, keep on keep on keeping on there with uh, the material side. Thank you so much for taking the time. And Dale, good to talk to you, man. I appreciate you coming by as well. Thanks for having us. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for having us. Great to be here. Now, this is just the beginning of the enlightened story, but what a debut so far. The road ahead in 2024 promises a few new exciting evolutions on this product path, as Dale alluded, and we'll be sure to discuss them when they're ready, because the engineers would like us to wait. In the meantime, if you like this chat, be sure to listen to some of our other conversations. Wherever it is, you listen to podcasts. And remember, you can always watch episodes of our Thrive podcast on the Bridgestone America's YouTube page. Wherever it is you hear us watch us or otherwise feel free to give us a rating or a review tell us how we're doing and you can always send a question an episode idea or some feedback via email at thrivepodcast at bfusa.com thanks for listening i'm keith collie telling you to keep on keeping on and remember that at bridgestone today tomorrow together we thrive be good everybody